name is Jeffrey Dew. I'm a member of the Glasgow Mission Coalition and I live in South Sudan. Earlier this year, the UN Mine Action Service found evidence that cluster munitions have been used in South Sudan in an area not previously known to have been contaminated prior to December 2015. This has been devastating news, especially given the existing burden of cluster munition contamination that my country struggles to clear. The perpetrators are yet to own up. Imagine you live daily with an unexploded submunition by your side. Imagine this unexploded submunition waiting day by day, month by month, and even year by year, like a real submunition in the ground, waiting, waiting to either be cleared or as many uh, thousands. of people living in the shadow of cluster mission snow waiting to claim a victim. This metaphorical submission is your career by joining the convention or by encouraging others to do so. Universalization of this treaty is a goal you can achieve. Please don't leave it any longer. As an indiscriminate weapon it has been well established that class munitions have a devastating impact on the lives of civilians. The global norm against the use, production, stockpiling, and transfer of class munitions is growing stronger and stronger. <coughs> and most countries no longer want to be associated with the weapon. We have documented around 150 states speaking out about used by Syrian government forces, including many non-members of the Convention. That is clear proof of the knowledge of the, of the worldwide stigma against these weapons. <coughs> 113 countries have joined the Convention on Transform Nations, of which 84 are state parties. This includes more than half of the countries that have been affected by Transform Nations. Nearly half the countries that have ever stockpiled them and nearly half of the countries that have ever produced them. Strong commitments against class munitions have also given have also been given by many of those countries yet to join uh, the treaty. This is a great achievement just three and a half years after entry into force. Since the last intersectional meetings in April 2013, Bolivia and Iraq have ratified the convention and sent kids and ladies at a city. We welcome and congratulate each of these countries and thank them for their commitment. We must, however, voice our disappointment at the slow pace of ratifications and assistance within this last year. A year in which we have witnessed the ongoing use of class munitions in Syria, continuing to protect the lives of civilians, the use in my country is after them, yet promised ratifications and assessments have not been followed, uh, have not been followed through. And we now need your action and not just words. Sometimes we hear from you that your ratification or assessment process is under consideration. But it will be done soon, and it is at an advanced stage. Or will be a third party by the second MSP, the third MSP, by the fourth MSP, or the fifth MSP. <coughs> and days, months, and even years go by. We welcome these statements of intention and encourage you to continue voicing your support for the treaty and providing updates on your progress. But we also need to see results. We understand that it's due process and that sometimes bureaucracy can be a real challenge. But we also know from the 84 countries that have achieved this state party status, when there is a personal and political will, universalization is a goal that can be met and can be met swiftly. You are also not alone in meeting this goal. 
Many organizations are here to provide support to CRC, the Interim ICE, ICU, the ICRC, the Treaty Leadership and Existing State Party City Convention. Good initiatives have been taken, have taken place since the last intersectional meeting, nationally and regionally, and we thank the states that have shown great leadership by organizing these initiatives. Togo, Chile, New Zealand, and others. We've seen good results, including the long strategy and the Santiago Declaration, both of which encourage all state parties in those regions to join the convention quickly. We are, we are pleased to work in partnership with you to help deliver these important initiatives. We also welcome the CARICOM statement at the first committee last October, noting the commitment to bring all CARICOM members on board the convention as soon as possible. We offer our support to meet this goal and hope that others worldwide can support CARICOM to achieve this. We would like to thank the coordinators of the universalization, Norway and Ghana, and previous coordinator, Portugal, as well as the state parties providing and <coughs> participating in the universalization team of governments led by Portugal and Ghana. We would also like to commend the president of the convention, Zambia, for, for, for prioritizing universalization during its leadership. Promotion of universalization needs to come from a much broader group of states, however. All state parties have a legal duty under Article 21 to promote universalization of the treaty. You can and should be ambassadors and champions of the treaty. And we will work in partnership with you to make this obligation. Also, over the last year, the CMC campaign network has continued to work in over 100 countries worldwide. We have okay for the treaty, share petition resources, working uh, partnership with states and the treaty leadership to deliver results and we raise awareness of the diversity and impact of personal reasons. Our collective global strength comes from national campaign members who work mostly voluntarily and buy small grants to support the work of the Convention on Trust and Issues. We are here to support you to make this convention a success. Last year marked a milestone for the CMC as we reached our 10th anniversary. We marked two even more important milestones, the fifth anniversary of the adoption of the convention in Dublin on May 30th, 2008, and the fifth anniversary of the signing of the convention in Oslo on December 3rd, 2008. CMC campaigners promoted Adversaries worldwide, and we thank states that joined us, including those who created the call for our Kendall Aid Vision and Portugal here in Geneva in December. We cannot let these adversaries pass without respectively reminding the 21 countries that signed the convention on December 3rd, 2008, but are yet to ratify to do so without further delay. This includes Benin, Colombia. Republic of Congo, Kenya, Madagascar, Namibia, Somalia, South Africa, Tanzania, and Uganda. We also urge uh, the 18 countries that adopted the Convention in Dublin in May 2008, but have yet to accede to keep their commitment and join the treaty without delay. This includes Argentina, Finland, Morocco, uh, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Timor Leste, and Venezuela. In a week, that many of you are also here for the meeting of the Mind Bank Treaty. We ask Colombia, Thailand, Turkey, Zimbabwe, and other 46 state parties uh, to that treaty, but have not yet joined the CCM. Why the delay? Don't abandon your role in the protection of civilians. When the world tax stop, of the treaty at the first review conference in 2015, be a global champion in the protection of civilians. Bearing political instability, majority of countries yet to ratify should be able to do so in the year ahead. It is just a matter of prioritization. 
Equally, we know that a strong number of observers stay in the process of working towards assessment. <coughs> We're confident any challenges you face can be resolved and we stand ready to help you. Again, I ask you, please do not leave it any longer. Do not leave the bulbs lie there any longer. Do not let new ones drop down any further. Hurry up and join the ranks. Together we can achieve a world that is free from the threat of plastic bombs. Thank you.